So the problem asks to calculate the area, that's one calculation, and then the centroidal location of this shaded blue area. Here are the answers. That area is size of 4. The X bar is 9 eighths, and the Y bar is 6 fifths. So let's go step by step through this problem. So we think about um, setting up and introducing a little area, dA. Maybe you've done this all the way back to calculus. dA is the multiplication of this distance, dx, by this height distance, dy. So dA is dy dx. True? It looks familiar. So if I wanted to calculate the area, the area, I would just sum over all the little da's. This is calculus. And then somebody says, well, I could sum over them first with respect to x and then y, or we could uh, sum over y and then x. Does the order of the integration matter? No, it theoretically doesn't matter, but it's a practical issue, a pragmatic issue. As soon as we move from this sort of single integral over the area, and we have this over x and then y, often we introduce two integrals. Sines, that's common, like this. And then you would do the first with respect to x, that would be the inner integration. And then with respect to y, or you could do first with respect to y, and then with respect to x. I encourage you to do it both ways. Brush up on your math. Become real familiar so you don't get stumped. Okay? I forgot to really emphasize what is the integrand for this integral. The simplest integrand. Just one. Just easy. Right? This is just 1 times dy dx or dx dy. All right. If you do the first, the inner integral with respect to x, then what's the outer integral? With respect to y. And so the book makes a big deal about looking at strips. And so the strip is like the last or the outer integral. And if you're doing the last outer integral with respect to y, maybe I should sketch it like this, the strip will look like this. If the last integral is with respect to x, and this is my blue shaded area, the, the little strips will look like that. Okay? So that's what I mean by both of them are equivalent, but one is, you know, they, there's a pragmatic difference to them. So, uh, which way do you want to go? Do you want to go with uh, the first, the horizontal strips, that'll be the last summation? Or do you want to go with the vertical strips, that'll be the last summation? Both, I don't have time to do. Horizontal? horizontal? Okay, that's fine. I think what I need to do is I need to get to a clean sheet of paper, or maybe I can work on this one. Okay, um, let's do this. Okay, so first of all, when you have this inner integral, and your next integral is the y, this is the way I learned it, this is the way I teach it. Basically, you think about picking a random y location in between the upper and lower limits of y. All right. So just throw out and say it has to be between 0 and 2, and you just pick a y. Yeah, there's my y. I just picked it right there. Oh, somebody else picks one right there. No problem. Now, focused on that random y, what is the lowest value of x? And what's the highest value of x? You have to work that out because that's our in limits of the integration, we have to basically, um, I'm going to get rid of this here. We basically have to do this. We integrate and integrate first with respect to x, that the integrand is 1, and then with respect to y. Okay, I've got four limits to struggle with. Probably the hardest are the two inner limits. The outer two are really easy. The outer two What's the extreme with respect to the y? Extreme low, 0. What's the extreme max with respect to y? 2. That's the easy ones. 
but I have to get the lower limit and the upper limit with respect to x at some arbitrary y. That's the challenge. Now, one of those is easy. One of them is hard. <laughs> Which one is easy, the lower or the upper? The lower. Because no matter what value of y I pick, this value of y or that value of y, the lower is always zero. It's always zero. All right, but now I've got to look at it and say, I need to find that upper value for x. So what I'm looking for is I'm looking for this as a function where I'm looking for x as a function of y. You're saying, oh, look at this. They gave me y as a function of x. That was equal to 2 ninths x squared. Maybe I should have done this one. No problem. You can do that later. But we're doing this one right now. So what we have to do is we have to get x as a function of y. So what does that look like? Does it look like 9 over 2 times y to the square root? Did I lose you on that? Were you with me? Very good. You've got to get that right. You've got to get the limits right. Otherwise, your calculus is all shot. Now, somebody says, I remember when you took the square root, blah, blah, blah. You had this plus or minus. Look, it's all in the first quadrant, isn't it? It's all just plus. Let's not worry about that right now. So 9 over 2y square root. At this point, can you do the first integration? That integral was never on your any final exam in Cal 2, believe me. It's too easy. Sometimes the easy integrals trip you up because they're almost too easy, aren't they? So you just say, well, the integral, blah, 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 with respect to x of 1 to x, isn't that just x evaluated at the lower limit of 0 and upper limit square root of 9 over 2, like that? And so this inter integral just becomes the square root of 9 over 2y. True? And now I have my outer integral, 0 to 2, dy. I need to wrap around. I'm running out of room. That one's a little more challenging. The square root of 9 over 2 is a constant. Let's just kind of move it outside. And I have y to the 1 half, and I need to integrate that. Ooh, that's a little harder. What one is that? 1 half y to the 3 halves? Or is it 2 thirds? y to the 3 halves? I can't remember. It looks good? Look good? Yep, we need to not make an error. First of all, if Santa Maria didn't emphasize it, we look, when you don't get the right answer, we look for opportunities to award partial credit. Big theme in the review, as well as the previous exam, you've got to get a good, clean, clear, correct free body diagram. For this type of problem, you've got to set the integral up correctly, clearly. And then you become a mathematician and forget that you're an aspiring engineer and you just grind through the math. But you've got to set it up correctly. So many times I'll see they never set it up correctly and then I can tell they ground through going way off in left field and there's just not much hope for awarding much partial credit at all. So set it up correctly and then grind through and hopefully avoid mathematical mistakes. All right, so two-thirds. Okay, then we evaluate from zero to two. And so when we calculate this area done this way, the area comes in at four. I mean, let's we can bloody all the way through it. Um, we have the two-thirds, and then we have two, uh, two to three-halves, three-halves. All right. Um, sure doesn't look like four, does it? Is that four? Yes. It is? Good. You have better insight than me. I have, it's been many years since I passed calculus. Did I tell you I was glad to pass it? 
be done with it. All right, let's move on. Now, what about X bar? Um, I need to get another page. There it is. We can start with a clean page now for X bar, can't we? Yes, sir. All right, very good point. And the X, did they list any units for X? If they would have put X in meters and Y in meters, then this area would have needed meter square for units. But in a lot of problems in the textbook, they just avoid any units for centroids. And so this area is really dimensionless. Yeah. Okay. But if they would have put feet or meters, then your, your answer does have units. Okay. All right. How do we calculate X bar? What's the equation? <clears throat> Professor, I don't have my equation sheet. No, we know this equation. What is the equation to calculate the centroidal location of that blue shaded area? One over the area we just conveniently calculated to be four. The integral of X tilde dA. What is X tilde? It's different than X bar. I'm just following the notation in the textbook. What is X tilde? It's the centroidal location of my little area or my little volume or my little length. If I'm doing a length integral or an area integral or a volume integral, it's the, the centroidal X location of that little chunk. So if I come in here and I say, I'm going to just start with DX, DY, what is the centroidal location of that little DA? What is the X location of the centroid of that little area DA? It's almost too obvious. It's just X. It's just X. It's just X. X tilde is just X. It's too easy. How about this one? What is the Y tilde when we do the Y bar? We're going to do the same equation, but I need the local the, for that little chunk, that little area, that little DX DY. What is its Y location of the centroid of that little area? It's just Y. Y tilde is Y. Man, this is confusing. Now, we go and do the same thing. We're going to say we're going to put DX, DY, and do a double area integral, or we're going to do DY, DX. Your call. You don't, you don't have to stay with the same order of the integration. What did we do before? We did, first we did with respect to X, and then Y. And we ended up running something like this, didn't we? You want to do it the other way? Just to see the difference? So we would do with respect to Y and then X. And in this case, X tilde is X. And 1 over the area, might as well just put 4 in there for X bar or for area. Okay. Now you're getting better at this. So we have a double area. X is the integrand, dy. What's my lower limit on y and upper limit on y? I look at the outer limit integration with respect to x. That means I grab arbitrary x. Oh, I just grab this x right there. That's my arbitrary x. And I say, what is my lower value of y and my upper value of y? My lower value of y, 2 over 9x squared. What's my upper value of y? 2, regardless of what random x I grab. All right, now let's finish it out and get the outer limits. And so x goes from a lower 3, uh, 0, sorry, I gave you the second one, 0 to 3. Does that look good? We want to have that clearly put out there just in case you might make an error after that. Okay, now, maybe I should pause. How many people are real confident they can do that integral? And there's a trick in that integral because a lot of people will mess that integral up. Should I just pause and walk around for a minute? I need you to do that. Watching me do it's not going to prepare you for the exam. When you uh, integrate uh, with respect to y, 
can x be treated as a constant? Yep, on that first integral it sure can. And so basically just go like have x times the integral of 1 dy from the lower 2 9 x squared to the upper 2. Oh, now I know how to do that a lot easier, true? Because isn't that 2 minus 2 9 x squared times x? And now, and now I'm ready for that outer integral with respect to x from 0 to 3. How do I do this integral now? That's the integral from 0 to 3. I would break that into a polynomial 2x minus 2 ninths x cubed dx. And then I know, okay, how to handle the x term and then the x cubed term. True? So this would be, let me see if my math is correct. x squared 2 divided by 2, is that that one? And then minus 2 ninths one fourth x to the four. Does that look good? And then I integrate and I have from zero to three and I forgot my one fourth and so I'll put my one fourth there. Give me a thumbs up if that looks okay. Does it look okay? All right, I'm telling you this, this integration is tedious and error prone. But you have to be able to do it. And so now I put uh, um, x, oh, well, x is 3. So 3 squared minus 2 ninths, 1 fourth, 3 to the 4, all of that divided by 4. And if you simplify that, does that come out to 9 eighths? I hope so. But I know the answer is 9 eighths. Agree? I got one agree. Anybody else want to run it or check it? You got it? Two agrees. You're not going to get as much points just for the calculus finishing out the integral. You need to do it, but if you don't set it up right, it's like f stumbling and not getting a correct free body diagram. You lose massive amount of points when you have an error in the free body diagram. Massive amount of points when you can't set up the integral correctly. Thank you very much for checking that, everybody. Do we want to do Y bar? Okay. Do I want to give you a minute to set it up? And then you pick. Am I going to integrate with respect to X and then Y? Or with respect to Y and then X? Should I give you a minute or do you want me to just blaze through it? Because I'm not certain the value of my blazing through it to your education. I'll give you a minute. And then you want to just yeah, pick it up here and move on. All right. So when you want to solve for y bar, it's the same equation, 1 over area, the same 1 over 4, the integral of y tilde, and then your choice of dx dy or dy dx, but you just have to do the da in there. Okay? So I'm going to leave it at that and just say you'll get six-fifths. You really need to do that on your own. Okay? That answer I know is correct. Okay? Do it both ways. Actually stop and pause in the middle after you do that first integral with respect to y, then x. We actually were doing it this way we were really right in the middle after that first integrand. We basically had that strip. And then we summed the strips over all the x's. The outer integral was x dx. Okay? All right.